Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. It's noon in Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C. right now, it is gray and rainy. So I hope if you're joining me right now from uh, someplace sunny, you'll bring some of the warmth and the sunshine. It's, uh, it's good to have a chance to get together here in the Purple Parlor. And I'm glad to see some folks joining me. Let me know where you're coming from. Uh, fun to see our little group gather every time. And um, in case any of you don't know, my name is Ginger Gaines Sorelli. I'm the senior pastor at Foundry United Methodist Church here in D.C. And every Wednesday at noon, I welcome whoever has just a minute or two usually about 15 or so, um, to hang out for some unscripted ponderings here in the purple parlor of my home. And I just sort of share some unscripted thoughts about what's going on in my head and my heart, and here's where things are today. Um, I am thinking, I'm thinking about well, I'm thinking about voting rights. <laughs> um, on Monday was the 57th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And there's a big march happening with many of the big social justice organizations in our nation joining together on a march uh, through the week emphasizing the absolute necessity of attending to uh, the issue of voting rights and to the ways that voting rights are um, under attack and no matter what some people might want to say um, that uh, voter suppression and legislation that will hinder people's access to the polls or discourage people from making the effort to get to the polls. Uh, that legislation is happening in all kinds of places across the country. And with everything else that's happening, it's very easy for us to take our eyes off of that particular ball. And um, and it's it's one of the things that, along with climate change, I would say, it's one of the things that we absolutely can't, we can't let go. Because if we've learned anything over the last year, particularly, especially since January 6th of 2021, um, what we've learned is that democracy and um, peace and peaceful transition and in terms of power, those things are not givens. They have to be sustained. They have to be supported. And the way that they're sustained and supported is through democratic process. And uh, our primary power in a democracy is the vote. And it is absolutely appalling, embarrassing, and, um, uh, well, it leaves one speechless, that we are in 2022 still debating and letting letting political powers that be um, muck about with little details instead of just passing clear legislation that says everything that we need to do to help people vote we're gonna do anything that gets in the way of people voting we're going to oppose. And, and the fact that that is debatable in a democracy just shows how deeply broken our democracy is and how fragile. And um, so I've been thinking about this a lot this week. I've been thinking about the people who've lost so much, lost their lives even in the struggle uh, for the vote for people, of diff uh, for women, for, uh, for African-Americans, 
in this country um, for people who are imprisoned, um, for people who are uh, you know, younger. I mean, the fact that we have, that we allow, um, what's the, someone who's watching right now might know or who sees this later. I'm curious because I have not checked in a minute. You know, I mean, maybe it's probably different per state, but like, how old do you have to be to be registered to own a gun? Or even to drive a car, both of which um, cause all sorts of, uh, of deaths and violence, um, uh, if you look at the data. Um, how old do you have to be to own a gun or drive a car, and how old do you have to be to vote? I mean, I just I think there's some really basic things that we need to address and could be easily addressed. So that's on my mind right now, and I'm thinking about the power of um, the power of people coming together and and organizing and and you know there's no perfect human system because humans aren't perfect. We all of us are flawed and finite and depend wholly on uh, the goodness and grace of God. Um, and we have power. I'll never forget when we come together. Um, and, and there is power in the human system called democracy. And I think it's, what was, I, I never remember the quips well enough, but there was somebody who once said, you know, um, democracy isn't a perfect system, but it's the one, it's the best, it's the best of, imperfect systems that we've got uh, or something like that that's not what it said but you know you get the point um i think it's i think it's a way that when managed well and supported uh a democracy is really supposed to give everybody uh a voice in some way because they can vote <laughs> and um so various systems are keeping that from happening right now, and um, we all have we all have power because we we can vote at least most of us. <laughs> um, and I remember this this graphic from one of the elections in the last number of years, and you know it's it said it was something again. I'm going to get this wrong, but the 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 headline at the bottom or the caption was something like you know. Oh, there's nothing I can do about um, about what's going on right now. And then it had a, a graphic, a picture, like a cartoon, with like a fraction of this huge group of people over here who voted, and then the majority who didn't vote. And um, you know, it's this sort of it happens all the time. We say, "Oh, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything about it. I have no power. I can't." And it's just false. It's just false. Um, if everyone, I mean, even if you don't agree, but I mean, at least if we know that people are voting, then the people have, have chosen a direction. Um, I, there's a scripture, oh, where did it go? I had it. Oh, there it is. A scripture in Ecclesiastes 4 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie close t together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And I thought about this today as I was thinking about the power of uh, organizing of people coming together and that we you know one person can't get the whole thing done necessarily um, two people can get more done three people can get even more done and be even stronger and when you put masses together moving in the same direction that's power and that's that's you know uh, that's why mobilizing um, and making it possible for people to vote um, is is power there is power it's just are we using the power we have and are we supporting those efforts 
Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about connected to this is the way that we organize and, and come together um, locally. And many of you who join me through the week after either in live or, or in the following days after this time each week, you're in different places. But um, everywhere that we live, there are ways to organize with other people to help move something forward, not only through voting, but also for many of us through our faith community um, or other civic organizations. And certainly here at Foundry, through Foundry and in the Foundry community, we are active partners of the Washington Interfaith Network, which is our interfaith organizing um, community uh, in DC. And really the whole, I wanna, I wanna spend just a little bit of time talking about, about this work and why it, it's important and how it's part of our faith. It's a deep piece of, of what we're called to be and to do. Um, let me talk about the work first and then I'll come back around. Hopefully I won't forget. Um, but, you know, the, the idea is that um, people in faith community across different uh, faith traditions come together and listen to people in the community. They, we listen to one another. We listen to the needs that our, that our own congregations are lifting up and to the needs in the community surrounding us and throughout the city. And what are the things that we as people of faith agree on are core things that our leadership in the city need to be caring for and addressing in order to attend to the most critical needs of the community, of the city, of the people who live and work here. And then together, through that process, an agenda is created. These are the things, these are the priorities uh, that we as the Washington Interfaith Network, this network, community relationships, these are the things that we have heard and received and discerned that need to be addressed and that are critical issues. And then from there, it's about, it's about organizing and helping our elected leaders, the people who actually can pull the levers, who can um, approve or not uh, budgets, can approve and, uh, and allocate, appropriate money to actually move in certain directions. Um, so we organized to, to engage with um, the elected leaders who have, the, who have that power because we're all in this community together. So um, Washington Interfaith Network and other, ne um, other organizations that are part of that larger work across the nation um, are nonpartisan. It's not about this party or that party. It's about the, the needs of the community as discerned through deep listening and solidarity. And so when the agenda is lifted and clear, then you start doing that organizing to get more people to help represent um, the, that this is not something we're just making up. These are issues um, and real people's needs that we wanna present. And the way, the only way this, this works, because mm, politicians um, are, there's some wonderful people who are in politics and thank God for people who are there to serve, truly seek to serve the common good. Um, politicians also know that in order to keep doing um, anything, hopefully they're seeking to do good, that they need to get reelected. And what is it that gets people elected? Votes. And uh, how do people um, show, how do, how do politicians know um, how many people are gonna vote for them? Well, you think about um, if you have 1,500 people show up to one event saying, here is the list of five things that we think are, are really important. And all these people that represent a whole lot more people are gonna be looking at who is, is, is committed to addressing these things. Now, if you have 15 people show up in a, at an event and you say, here's five things, 
then that's not going to inspire or move a politician to think they need to look more closely at those issues. This is not rocket science, but I want to take a minute just to break it down. Because I think sometimes we think, oh, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do about climate change. There's nothing I can do about um, racial injustice and white supremacy. There's nothing I can do about, um, about gentrification. There's nothing I can do about uh, pay uh, inequities and the issue of um, the lack of complete lack of affordable housing for people um, who live and work or trying to work in the city. Uh, and you know some of these key things, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't, I can't do anything about that. And here's the thing, yes, there is. Yes, there is. One, you can participate through your faith community Certainly, if you're part of Foundry, even if you live remotely, if you consider yourself part of Foundry, you can do something about some of that in a concrete way that will affect lives in this community, in the nation's capital. Um, and that is through uh, engaging with the Washington Interfaith Network actions. We have an action coming up in uh, two weeks on Sunday, March the 20th. And it's at 3 p.m. and it is a, a Zoom action. It is so easy to do something that will make a big impact. 3 p.m. on March the 20th at 3. 3 o'clock, March 20th, Sunday afternoon. Um, and Brian has the link um, that he's dropping in. And the way that we do this organizing work is that we say um, from each faith community, you know, we've got targets because we say we can't, we can't have impact if we don't have um, the people there. Again, one person, like with my sign, I mean, I might inspire some people. <laughs> like, go, go, go. Um, but you get 2,000 with the same message. That has impact. That makes people go, huh. There's something going on there. There's energy there. There's you know that doesn't just happen and so that's what we're trying to do in order to get that big number we have to make commitments as that's part of what the organizing work is and we as partners and quite frankly foundry is a as a, a partner who um is looked to to be to be a strong partner in the work we've committed to 300 people foundry and foundry uh connections people who consider themselves part of the foundry community and are are supporting uh, the things that we're looking at and, and trying to accomplish our commitments, our justice commitments, our faith commitments. Um, we're looking to have 300 people uh, show up and we need you to register and we need you to show up. So um, I know we're gonna be rolling out some more information and um, that'll help you understand what the agenda is and how you can make an impact through the WIN action on March the 20th at 3 p.m. Um, and I want you to, I, I, please take, take a minute and, and educate yourself. And also the, the bonus here is that if you show up to this thing, super easy. WIN is always really good about keeping things on time. So the time frame is the time frame. Um, and uh, you'll get to learn a little bit. You'll get to see uh, and interact with some of the folks who are coming um, up for election this year uh, on the city council and some other key positions um, in the city. So please register for that and please bring other foundry folk in. Please push. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm serious. We need to. This is something you can do. This is something you can do. And it is so low threshold and will have a big impact. And um, it's like voting. And here's the other thing. Um, last summer we had uh, Stacey Abrams was a guest um, lay speaker for our summer series. And she beautifully uh, sort of wove together her faith as a lifelong United Methodist and her absolute laser focus on voting and voting rights and organizing for um, for voting access, and um, I highly commend her message, um, which ties these things together beautifully. 
And I would also say, you know, I wrote a book called Sacred Resistance a few years ago, and um, and really it's a theology. <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's a theology for how our faith guides and grounds our public witness as, as followers of Jesus. And uh, Washington Interfaith Network organizing and advocacy is a piece of that. Um, taking seriously our, our citizenship and our call to, to need to vote um, is a part of that. Um, and not acting like we can't, like we're powerless, when we're not powerless. We have a voice, and um, most of us um, have some way, some access to the vote, and should be doing everything in our power, not only uh, as people of faith, um, certainly, um, though that is the core reason, <laughs> um, but also because we are called to love our neighbor, and and part of doing that is, is to be good citizens where we live. So that's what I got today. And um, I, I, I am, am <laughs> the other piece is, is that when we come together and we organize together um, and we set these numbers, I am like, you know, I have, I might have a slight, a little tiny competitive streak. <laughs> I like when I have a goal I like to I like to exceed it and our goal is 300 people um, from Foundry and please be among them I'm asking you to be among them it's a it's a small thing that we you can do that we can all do and it'll be exciting to see uh, what we can do together to improve uh, life and build a more equitable and just um, city and community here in our nation's capital so there you have it. Um, let's pray. God, we give you thanks that you have given us power, power to um, act, to choose, and to, to work together with one another, to listen deeply, to be guided by you and the things that you care about, love and compassion, equity, justice, mercy and peace. God help us and guide us in how to both love you and our neighbor as ourselves and help us to do what we can in the face of so many challenges. There are things that by your grace we can do. So move us God by your spirit to do them for your sake and more importantly for the sake of those whom you love. We pray all of these things in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. All right. May the peace of God be with you, and may you know in the very core of your being the liberating power of God's love. I will see you next time.